Hi there, I'm Rich, and that's my name, Rich. I'm actually poor, or I probably have this done. I'm going to try to be working on a power steering pump. I'm not sure where it is. I'm not a mechanic. On a 2003 Buick Regal. I don't know where the reservoir to fill up the power steering, but I know it's leaking, it's making funny noises, and they say that's a good example. One of the things I'm going to have to do is move the passenger right front tire. I'm going to use some jack stands to for holding up the car a little bit higher so I can crawl underneath it. One of the things I've learned, I thought, well, I'm going to have to get this wrench, I'm going to have to get that wrench. Well, most of the auto stores will let you use their equipment. Isn't that neat? You just put a down payment for it, you can get the equipment out. Some of the things that you might want to do is get some plastic gloves for your hands. Anytime you get any type of chemicals on your hands, even though you say you wipe it off, it absorbs into your bloodstream, gets into your liver, and I've had some serious, I mean, in my age, I've had a lot of friends that said, well, due to the chemicals I was exposed to working on cars, I have this skin problem and stuff. So always wear rubber gloves. Also, you need some safety glasses. Things drop. The guy told me the other day, even battery acid can drop out of... Uh, so I, I use safety glasses. And to save the environment, you might want to use some cardboard. Some type of pan to catch any type of solution might be dropping off from your power steering pump. And also, if there's another major spill, you can use kitty litter or, or floor dry. The car up on jack stands, we have these, what they call, heavy duty wheel shock or something, not sure, chalk. And what we want to do is sort of put these behind the tires to keep to keep it from moving any which way. If we're trying to tighten a nut or bolt or loosen a bolt or not, we don't want the car to slide back when we're underneath it. Something for protection. Well, one of the things they say to get to the fuel pump, we have to move, not fuel pump, power steering pump, we have to move the tire. So, next thing we have to loosen the lug nuts. So, we have to loosen the lug nuts, lug nuts to get to the power steering pump. Okay, you can see there's a little plastic or blow bolts or something that pops in here. And this is a really neat tool. I think it's in the poster area. I don't really know what you, what you call it. But you can just pull it in there and just prop it out like that. And the same thing with this one. Just pop it out. And guess what? There's where you can see, ooh, look at all that grease down in there. Mm-mm-mm. Well, I'd say make sure you have your pulley numbered, or a picture of how your pulleys are. I got this serpentine belt puller from AutoZone, and I'm just going to loosen it up. See, so you loosen it up. You push, and the belt gets loose. And so you just take the belt off. I'm holding the camera, so I can't show you, but I'm just pushing this down and the belt comes off. All right, I'm looking down toward the power steering pump, and there's just a couple little things. I'm going to try to zoom in here. Right here. Let's see. Right above my finger. I'm trying to find it on my... is 
a little clamp that you clamp your hose. You just unclamp that. I wonder why that's not clearing up. Okay. There it is. Well, two things. You have to unclamp this little clamp right here. To take this hose off, you just squeeze these two little things together and pull the part off. And then there's a nut up here. This is your high pressure line. And you just unscrew that, take that off, and there will be a little wire, a little harness. It doesn't plug into electrical, it just snaps into the top of your reservoir, and you just sort of pull it out. And that's the only thing that holds that as far as connecting. It's really easy to take off. And just the two nuts. Again, you just have to turn your wheel to get to the nuts. Just turn the wheel to get to the nuts, and uh, or bolts, that is. And that's all there is to it. You just pull it right on out. I don't know if you can see this or not. Right, right there is where the nut goes. You have a bolt. I mean, it's not a bolt nut, but you turn this pulley back and forth until you get the hole lined up with your nut. You loosen it up, and then you go 180 degrees down here. Loosen, turn this until you get the hole in there, and get your your socket. And I use, it hit my foot. This is great because it's great extension. You can see how long it is. I don't know how long it is, but it's a 13 millimeters, 13 millimeter socket. That way you don't have to have an extension or anything. I broke a small one trying to get it loose, but this one works out really great. I really didn't have to have too much torque to loosen it up and it came out good. Another way you can look right in here, you can turn your pull again and get this nut here, loosen it up, and then you just drop the whole device out, pull it out this way, or looking on this side, you pull it out this way, and you get your power steering pump out. It's just right up in here. So you just put this in between the holes of your pulley and get get it on the nut and just loosen it up and yank it off. Hi there. I got this cooler from Auto Advance. You just sort of rent it, you just put a deposit down. And what you do, there's a little nipple-like thing. I don't know if you can see this. It's a little nipple thing just pushes in there. And so I'm going to pull this pulley here. So I get two halves. I wish I remember how to do this. See this sort of goes halfway. This way. And you screw this all the way down. And maybe this goes like that. And then you put this over this to sort of keep them together. So you're pushing this.
both sides of colon. Pull, 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 pull. There we go. Alright, then you start to turn it clockwise. And that's gonna push that little thing. Okay, I just got a little bit bigger ranch. Instead of this one, I got this one. And it works. So I'm gonna pull. And this is slowly pushing it. That's all there is to it. To remove the reservoir of the pump, you have to pull these things up, these little tabs, and then you take maybe another screwdriver, and what you do is you just keep on pushing this out until it comes out. It's really sort of difficult right at first, but it only goes one way. And start, start prying and just sliding it on out. Sort of a bear in a way. Take your pliers once you got it loose. Start pulling. Just like that. Then all you have to do is just remove it. However you do that. Just pull it out. That's all you have to do. One of the things they give you is an O-ring, and you have to put this on your reservoir pump before, or put it on your reservoir before you put it on the power steering pump. And it just slides on here. If you don't, it'll leak, which I just found out. One of the things that you need to know is when you put the little O-ring in here, make, it goes to a little step right here, but make sure it's nice and smooth. Make sure the area is nice and clean before you put this O-ring in. And then you can put your reservoir on your power steering pump. Make sure you pull these things off. only goes in one way. Once you have that on there, then you can slide your and just sort of tap it in. If you notice that thing goes down. Come on the other side. And you just sort of situate it there. Looks like it's in good shape. So what we're doing gonna do is just sort of tap it on. There. And it looks like we put this one and this one together. What do I need?
once you have that all set up, you just start screwing. You're going to tighten this nut, which is going to be pushing that down there. One. It goes on really easy. Pretty flush. The pump was pretty flush. Let's see if I can loosen this up now. And then just pick this up. Hey, I think I'm almost there. I might just another little tug. Hmm. I have found that the best thing to do when you put these bolts on or take them off, one's on top, one's on bottom, it's a 13 millimeters. And so one's on top, but you have to reach, you have to turn the pulley, once you get the belt off, you got to turn the pulley so you can loosen it up. And it's really not hard to loosen up, at least mine wasn't. And I actually use the belt pulley, you know, to pull the belt, and then the, of course this is on bottom. They're about 100. Are they 180? They are 180 degrees. And you just loosen this, and that's all it is to it. Now, on the top, see this little hole here? There is a little wiring harness, and I just snapped it. I just pulled it out of that, and that that worked great. And that, it, was, it wasn't as bad as I anticipated. Getting these little things off was not fun. Uh, be sure to wear your gloves. You don't want your skin to sore, but it goes into your kidney, or liver, and other parts. Try to wear protection as much as possible. Other than that, it, it wasn't a bad job. So now I'm getting ready to put it back on, and you take it off the same way. I did have to take it out through the front fender well, pull it out that way. See, you just pop it off with a, maybe wire cutters, and then, or a scribe, a little sharp, sharp nail, and then just slide this on, and you got a new O-ring on there. Keeps it from leaking.